Let's talk a minute about code, a code of ethics. Are companies' values different from a code of ethics? Do you see a difference between them? There's, there's a little bit of discussion going on between mm -hmm. corporate values and really identifying and describing those values and those who rely on a set code. Yes, well, a code of ethics is worth about the value of the paper on which the code of ethics is printed. Okay. Even assuming that the code of ethics has been, that piece of paper has been put up on the wall. What it really matters is behaviors. Mm -hmm. And behaviors are driven by the DNA of the organization. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure Enron had a code of ethics, mm -hmm. but it didn't have behaviors which corresponded to those code of ethics. And many companies, many organizations, um, in all parts of the world have codes of ethics which they don't live by. Values more describe the DNA of the organization and the guiding principles that will drive behavior. And, but even then, not all companies which have a list of values live by those values. So the truly authentic companies are those that have values that, that everybody understands and lives by and that guide behaviors and a code of ethics that are drawn from those values and correspond to them and that, and that people follow because they want to follow it and with the right prescriptions in place so that to, to make sure that you try and catch the odd number of people inside an organization that are not going to follow them. So if you look at the companies that we think about as really doing this stuff well, take Johnson & Johnson. Right? Mm -hmm. they, they have a credo. It's came out during the Depression. It was written by Robert Wood Johnson II during the Depression. They live by their credo. They take business, that describes their values. They take business decisions by their credo. When Tylenol happened, the company took the business decision that they didn't need to take because it's what the credo told them was their values and they were committed to living by their values. Mm -hmm. And that's a company that you think of as being truly authentic. But it's authentic because it knows who it is and it behaves the same way. Here's, I think, the, the thing about public relations, right? There's a lot of, th this, the term public relations and the description of the profession has become an ugly term. People use the term disparagingly and they talk about us in disparaging terms. And why is that? It's because we've allowed that to happen. Firstly, because we've allowed people to get away from the definition of what public relations was, that your connection, your relationship with publics mm -hmm. and equated to publicity. We should never have allowed that to happen. Mm -hmm. right? But then, inside the profession, if you can call it that, we've let people do bad things. Mm -hmm. And we've let them get away with it. And we haven't called them to, to the, on the carpet. And we haven't stood up for ourselves. So when people talk about PR equals spin, equals lying, we almost never say, hang on a second, that's not the profession that, that we belong to. So, when you, so from that, I think that as a profession, we need to stand up more for who we are and what we do and the value that we bring. And when you think about Arthur Page, he represented those sorts of values. Uh, we need to do a better job of that. But then each of us as individuals has to be really sure about what do I stand for? What's my DNA? And do I behave every day? When there's a gray area, do I take the right decision because it's the right decision? Mm -hmm. And if more of us were sure about that, I, I think I, the, the uh, reputation of the profession that we serve would be much higher than it is today. And we have an opportunity to turn it around, but it requires each of us to take the challenge. Jack O'Dwyer wrote an article on Peter Sussman's disapproval of what he claims is the cozy relationship between the press and Page Society and PR seminar. Does the public relations industry foster inappropriate relationships with members of the media? Well, I think Jack O'Dwyer has a very cozy relationship with 
many of us in the in the PR industry, and we all respect and um, and like that relationship. Um, it, he's one of the industry's characters, and every industry needs some characters like like Jack O'Dwyer. Um, he's always a good person to have a drink with at a, at a <laughs> function. Uh, no, I don't think that the industry fosters an inappropriate relationship with the media at all. And in, in fact, the relationship with the media now is incredibly professional. Uh, you know, it used to be, I guess, that PR people used to be able to wine and dine reporters and, uh, and maybe influence what they wrote about or who they covered. Those days are pretty much gone. You, you can't buy a reporter a cup of coffee anymore. So what a reporter is interested in in their relationship with a public relations professional? Uh, I think they're interested in a, a lot of things. Firstly, reporters have way too much to do and they're way too underpaid. And right now they're in an industry that has no clear sense of its future. So they're, have a, they're in an incredibly difficult position. And the more that we can help them with that, the more that we can make their life easier, um, the better. Second, we absolutely have to be true, truthful, and honest in our dealings with the media, um, individually and, and collectively. So the relationship with a specific journalist is you have to give them a point of view. They're interested in the point of view of you or the company that you work for or represent. And you have to give them that point of view in an honest and truthful way. But that's, that's what they're after. Nothing untoward about that. 